Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do, it is going to be a full face trying new makeup. We are trying all new makeup was, in this video. All of this was sent to me in PR recently, so none of it is new makeup that I have purchased. I've been talking about trying to cut back on the amount of makeup that I am buying, but because this is what I do as a job, I do get quite a bit of PR. So I have a handful of products that we're gonna be trying out today, and I kind of feel like a lot of these would fall under the under-hyped category, if you will, products that I haven't heard a ton of buzz about yet, but I wanna give them some love and see how they perform. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome. I do usually start my videos with an outfit of the day. When I do get ready with me videos, I'm typically just very chill. Like I have boxer shorts on and Kelly Gooch's merch that says dog mama. Go ahead and put my hair back so we can get started. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of videos focused on makeup already in my collection. I've talked about feeling very overwhelmed by a lot of the new makeup releases, about the amount of makeup I have in my collection. The day that I'm filming this, I posted a video doing five looks with five throwback palettes, um, like the Soft Glam, the Dose of Colors Frenkation, the Tati Beauty Volume 1 palette, and I've been doing some more like Project Pans, the oldest makeup in my collection, a full face of some of the oldest makeup in my collection. But I did mention when I talked Talked about taking this direction for the foreseeable future that I wasn't completely cutting out new makeup because it is also a part of my job but I definitely am trying to scale back especially how much I'm spending on makeup right now so I thought it would still be fun to incorporate a trying new makeup video and first up we're gonna use from touch and soul this is the no problem hybrid primer like I said I wanted to use some products that I feel like I don't see get a ton of buzz or attention or even brands um, just to do something kind of different because I know a lot of you have said in the comments too and I feel the same way it's like sometimes on YouTube you go online and your homepage is like, like all the same videos all the same products um, you know, I even hear it about the Will I Buy It series, like everyone's talking about the same thing. And I'm like, well, what can I do that would be just something a little bit different? So instead of putting like a ton of ColourPop in here and the new products that are launching like at Sephora that everyone's buzzing about in the Will I Buy It video, but let's do products that maybe are a little bit different. So Touch and Soul, I remember their No Problem priming water was really big back in the day, right? So I thought this would be a fun one to pull out. So I think that, I believe this is a new product to them. The Extra Pore Covering Top Secret for Perfect Makeup. Okay, so this is an airy smooth makeup primer, covers pores in areas of uneven texture, giving a perfect and seamless coverage for all day wear. So I thought that this would, would be a fun one to try. And it also made me laugh a little bit the other day. I got a comment, so it looks like, I got a comment from someone saying like that I have pores and I was like what it's like um y yes yes I do I sometimes I like just worry about social media and you know the amount of filters that get used but also like do I think there's anything wrong with using filters from time to time you're like laying in bed telling a story like sure you want to have like hearts on your face like whatever but when it comes to reviewing makeup products are showing how makeup products are applying i you know having a filter on just absolutely defeats the purpose of, of that and i feel like it's also made people so skewed to how people really look and how real skin really looks and so when i got a comment of someone being like i can see your pores i'm like that's because i have pores like I, what a little close-up of what my skin is looking like with that primer on we will say it's very soft like made my skin feel very soft a little bit of a scent to it like a little bit of that fragrancy type smell but i'm just going to use an old favorite in the spirit of trying to like also still trying to incorporate old makeup i'm going to use my wonder beauty nude illusion liquid foundation i have the shade light medium so this one i loved oh this is also Ooh, that's like also crusty around the edges there. You know, everything's fine. Some of this uh, experimenting with my older makeup, I'm like, is this the best idea for my skin? But you know, we're gonna give it a shot. I loved this one back in like, I don't know, 20, probably 2018. I feel like 2018 was like the year, like the video that I just posted with the old palettes, a lot of them were from 2018. I think only the Tati Beauty was one that launched in 2019. I feel like 2018 was like my prime my prime for uh, makeup that I really found and like really loved on. 
So using the Wonder Beauty, I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that in. Another up close with it blended out. I don't know, I feel like it did do a pretty good job because I, again, I do have large pores, especially on this side of my face. I've always had really big pores over here. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm poreless at the moment, but I think that they're a lot less noticeable than when I first started. That's what I think anyways. Um, but for concealer, I have CoverGirl. CoverGirl sent a package the other night and I was like, oh, okay. I feel like I haven't really even been saying the brand CoverGirl all that often, but I was like, let's try it out. So we have the Simply Ageless Triple Action Concealer. This says to depuff depuff conceal and care it has a cooling ceramic wand for an instant cold effect it's supposed to give you lightweight medium to full coverage with a radiant finish i'm a little worried about that but we're still we're we're gonna try it out i grabbed out the shade buff beige to try this is gonna be very embarrassing if i can't actually oh there we go i was like oh no oh no oh no so you have to take that off to insert the here is the cooling wand. So I don't know if I've ever seen one like this, but Dominique Cosmetics has her concealer that has the, it has like more like the metal wand at the end. So we'll try it out. I am adding it in here. I feel like, I don't, is this right? I feel like I'm not getting a lot of product or maybe that's, I don't know. We'll try it out. We'll try it out. We'll see. Okay, it is cooling, yes. I can feel the coolness happening. I feel like I didn't get like a ton of product on here, but we'll blend it out. And actually, I, I don't mind that. So we just have the concealer on this side, no concealer over here yet. First thoughts, I don't mind this one. It definitely does feel very lightweight. I'm just trying to decide if it has enough coverage for me, but honestly, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to try the other side and we'll see. I don't know if I love the applicator. Like I get the cooling part of it, but it's like, is it really doing all that much to depuff? And then such, I don't know. I guess it's also a good thing because I did see with the Dominique Cosmetics, you know, she said with hers, you also don't get a lot of product, but it helps from like overuse which I, I can understand too. And I'm someone who can tend to go pretty heavy on concealers, so I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. Not bad, I'm really not minding this because I got afraid with the radiant finish because I do like a more mattifying finish. But even still, like the Say Beauty Concealer, which I reviewed, reviewed recently, it was like highlighting my dark circles because it was also really light coverage. So you could definitely see my dark circles. And then with the radiant finish, it was just highlighting all of that. I don't think it looks bad though. I don't think it's like my most full coverage concealer I've ever tried, but I don't mind this right now. Next up, I have this powder from Ciate London. Again, I feel like Ciate London doesn't get a ton of hype, but they have some really nice products. This one here is their Everyday Vacay, and this is a coconut setting powder. All right, cute packaging. All right, this says lock and make up for long lasting wear with Ciate London's uh, setting powder, delicately coconut fragranced to take you back to the beach. It's a finely milled and lightweight loose powder, smooths over makeup for a crease free, soft focus finish with no flashback. So it is a white powder, and I'm just going to apply it with my sponge that I floss. Okay, the, the sponge has left. Sponge has left the building. No idea where that thing went to. So I'm just going to use a Real Techniques setting brush instead and hope this goes well. So I'm just going to pack a little bit there, tap a little bit off, and then I am going to add that over the concealer. Does anyone else do this? Because it happens to me all the time when I do my makeup. I'm using something like a blending brush even like a brow pencil and i'll set it down and then i can't find it and it's like it was right in front of me like i was just using it and then you know two hours later i'll walk into my office or the bathroom and it'll be like front and center what's those things that steal from you is it is it gremlins or trolls or what do they say that like steals stuff from you and then like brings it back because i swear that's what happens with my makeup like, there's no reason my sponge isn't in front of me right now, but it's, it's, I've looked on the floor. My dog was in the bathroom. It wasn't her. The de 
I'm so confused. I've been really into pressed powders for the past while now, but just within like the last two months or so, I've been getting more into loose powders again. I don't know, so far I think this looks pretty good. I'm also just going to kind of lightly run it over areas that tend to get a little bit oily on me. Having dinner tonight with Risa Does Makeup. We are celebrating her hitting 300,000 on YouTube, so I'm really excited. So we're just having little girls, little girls dinner. Just the two of us at a new place that opened in Vegas. So I'll be heading down to the Strip. I have no idea where I'm going. I think I'm going to the Cosmo, but I could, I have no clue. So I really need to figure that out before we leave, but Risa always looks so glam and beautiful. So I'm gonna try to, so, so I'm doing a full face of makeup I've never tried. That's a great plan, Samantha. <laughs> Close up check, no filter check. I'm not minding this right now. I think that that looks really good also. Sometimes with like a stark white powder, I'm like, ooh, is that gonna be, you know, how are we gonna feel about that? I think it looks pretty good. Like, I think it really worked with the concealer nicely. I don't notice any dry patches. I've definitely been dealing, like you can see some dryness here on my nose probably. I do have dry skin, but I feel like recently it's been even more dry, probably because I've been so lazy at night running my humidifier, so. <sighs> Sometimes just like filling up the water, I'm like, ugh. Um, so I really should start doing that again, but I don't notice any dry patches. I think everything looks really smooth right now. All right, all right. I really honestly didn't notice much of a coconut scent with this though, I'll say that, which I don't mind it either. But if you were hoping to put powder on and be transported to a beach drinking a pina colada, might not get it from the powder. All right, I am very excited because I talked about in my new makeup releases video that I really wanted to buy this new bronzer and you might be thinking, which one, Samantha? You say that every single week about five bronzers. There's been so many bronzers coming out recently, but this is the one from Merit Beauty. And I know I told you I didn't buy anything in this video and this is still true. Merit did send this one over in PR and I was so excited when I got it. So this is their bronze balm and they sent me the shade clay. So this is what their bronzer balm looks like. This one does retail for $30 and it is the bronze balm sheer sculpting bronzer. All about being natural. Natural. natural finish, it's supposed to give you natural looking warmth and depth, lightweight and flexible, a buildable cream bronzer, effortlessly blends into the skin, gives you soft definition. All right, let's try it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start to add some to the cheeks here. I've been thinking about bringing back the side part. How are we feeling? I had a side part in one of my past videos and I swear there was more comments about my hair in a good way than there was about the makeup that I was reviewing and I was like, is it time to bring back the side part? Like, remember when everyone was like, oh, side part means you're old. I'm like, mm, don't care. I think it's time to bring it back because I really liked it. So we're trying it out again today. Oh, I would love to have my sponge to blend this in, but here we are. I just went and got a new sponge damp. It's fine, everything's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and start to blend it out. The thing that I wonder with this is kind of, when I talked about this in a Will I Bite video, I did also mention the Iconic London Sheer Liquid Bronzer, which I do like that one, and I think that it's really pretty. It's just sometimes you do have to use a little bit more product because it's almost like the word sheer, like it's so, so natural. So already I'm like, okay, I need to build this up for sure. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more on. All right, and then we are going to blend that out. The word sheer always makes me a little nervous when it comes to a bronzer because like I love bronzing. Like I, I, I don't want it to be sheer. I want there to be bronzer. Let there be bronzer. So I'm gonna go in and build it up just a little bit more. Okay, this right here, I think this is the very like natural bronzer. So you can see like no bronzer on this side, the merit on this side. I think this way is a very inconspicuous bronzer, if you will. But I almost want just a little bit, just like a tad, just a touch more. Not too much. And I feel like the forehead's actually looking really good. I'm gonna leave the forehead. I'm just gonna do a touch more on the cheeks here because I love to be bronzed. I'm afraid of the sun, but you know, that's why I use bronzer. That I think is really pretty. Definitely very easy to blend, very smooth, very natural. Let's do the other side. I have to say, I really like this one. I think it would be good for those no makeup makeup days also. Bronzer is one of those that I can definitely go overboard on, but I never really get back. So like I said, I just love bronzer. But this is one that I feel like no matter how much you use, it's just gonna look really natural and smooth. So, so far so good. I feel like this is probably the most hyped product that I have 
in this video. I did also have the NARS cream bronzers. But I decided to go with the Merit because I personally was a little bit more excited about them. But I did get the ones from NARS as well. So I am definitely going to be testing those out. And then I do want to go into this here from Jouer. I was really excited when I got this. This is from Jouer, the Librites blush and bronze powder duo and i grabbed out the one in cool so the the blush shade is peony and the bronzer shade is perfect tan now if you have been around my channel for a bit you've seen like you probably know my love for the shoe duos i had two different ones in the blushes and then i did also have the bronzer duo and one side of that has a really large pan in it so they now have the blush and bronzer duos so i'm very excited about that i am going to use some of the bronzer though it looked maybe like it could be slightly light on me so i figured you know sometimes i do that anyways with a cream or liquid product i add it first and then top it with a powder product kind of the same as like a foundation setting with powder or a concealer setting with powder uh, it helps with the longevity of it but i really wanted to try this because it looked so I'm going to do the bronzer side first and just top off my bronzer. I'm going to use the BK Beauty 103 and then I am just going to add a little bit right on top. You can see that it definitely added a little bit more to the cheeks. Again, the shade in here, the bronzer shade is perfect tan and the shades in the bronzer duo that I have, which was the light to medium duo is sunlight and suntan. So yeah, you can see that mine was obviously very loved. So again, that's why I thought it would be fun to include this one in here. But I like that bronzer. I still think it was nice and smooth and natural. And I am also going to try the brush. I have a Ruffer 05. And this blush, first thought, it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Dior Backstage. Mm, I think the Dior is going to be on camera. I think they look a lot closer on camera. In person, I think the Dior looks quite a bit brighter, but it's still kind of that cool toned, almost like a lilac-y undertone type blush. So we're just going to go ahead and give this a shot. Ooh, I think that was really pretty. I don't know what eye look I'm doing yet. I'm like, I hope this will work with whatever I decide to do, but we'll see. We'll see. Very pretty blush. I am liking that. I feel like sometimes... For me, I think cool tone blushes can look a little bit more intimidating in the pan, but once I put it on, I tend to really like it. So I'm very excited about these. I know there's a few different shades. And again, this one that I grabbed is cool. So peony is the blush, perfect tan was the brown. We're gonna move over to brows. And instead of doing my brows off camera like normal, we do have a new brow pencil to use. And this one I'm really excited that I got in PR because I was interested in trying it out. This is from Benefit Cosmetics. This is the Gimme Brow Plus volumizing pencil supposed to instantly make your brows look more volumized packed with tiny fibers this powder pencil adheres to skin and hairs to volumize fill and define brows so i got the shade 2.5 that is my regular shade uh, when it comes to the benefit brow products and i was really curious to try this out because i still continue to repurchase on a regular basis the benefit precisely my brow and also the goof proof those just continue to be favorites of mine so you have the pencil on one side you do have a spoolie on the other so with this one you would need to sharpen it it's like the wooden pencil so you would need to sharpen it like a lip liner and eyeliner but i'm curious let's give it a shot so i start my brows just by spooling them up and into the place i want them my dog just let out a big sigh. She was not feeling the brow game today. And then I start underneath and just slowly start to sketch across. And then in the front is where I start to flick up. And then I like to kind of stop, spoolie, evaluate. It's kind of like stop, drop, and roll. Stop, spoolie, evaluate <laughs> the brow situation. So I want it to be a little bit more defined in the front here. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I mean, this is coming from someone who, like, I've never been a brow queen. Like, I've never had a comment from someone saying, like, drop the brow routine, sis. Like, that just doesn't happen for me. Uh, I just try to make them look nice and uniformed and really just a bit more, like, filled in because I do have brows. I just like to fill them in and shape them a little bit. But I would, I've been really, really considering doing like brow lamination or something like that. I think I'm getting closer to 
to buying it. I'm going to start on the other brow. I forgot to turn my camera on, so there's that. I'm gonna start it on the other brow. I think it took me more time than I feel like it normally does to do my brows, but it could just be because I am using a new product. So I'm just a little, you know, slower and I don't do my brows on camera all that often either, so the talking could also play into it. I'm just gonna fill in on the other side because I think they look good. The 2.5 shade match is a great one if you are similar to me. So brows are done. I think that those look pretty good. This is my harder brow for me to do and I actually feel like I like it. I still feel like the front isn't as good as it could be, but I think my brows look pretty good right now. I think it's a little bit more on the waxier side than I generally prefer, but I still feel like I had a really smooth time with that. So I'm gonna be curious. I, of course, always come back to review all the products that I am testing out. I really wanna try it for like that third and fourth time to see did I get quicker at it or is it just a pencil that does take a little bit more time? But I have to say, I think my brows look pretty good right Let's now. Let's move over to eyeshadow and this is, this is kind of a bummer. Uh, so I did get from Urban Decay, this is the She-Hulk palette. So I did mention this in my new makeup releases video and I did say that I thought they were going to be sending this to me. Urban Decay does a great job of emailing their PR list and saying, hey, we have this coming out, do you want it? Sign up for it but they don't tell you what it is and we don't know what it is ahead of time. So I didn't know it was gonna be with Marvel Studios and She-Hulk and I, like I don't know who that is. So I feel like maybe if I did and I saw that it was a bit of a larger palette as well, I think I probably would have passed on this. But when I mentioned it in the new makeup releases, I had so many people ask if I did receive it to do a video with it. I was like, oh, okay. And if you can see when I open it, very sad because the shade trademark of this did come completely shattered. I posted a video on TikTok with the like, oh no, oh no, you know, that one. And I was also getting a lot of comments from people saying like, this palette looks so beautiful. It looks like an everyday palette. That would have been my favorite shade. So I was like, you know what? I don't have a lot of new actual palettes to try this week. So I'm going to go ahead and use the She-Hulk from Urban Decay and we'll just try to do the best that we can. I tried to clean it up, but it's like a never ending shadow. Like, can you see all of that in there? And I already did one swipe through there in the side and then it's just like, it just keeps multiplying. I think that there's a lot of fun shades in this palette. I do think trademark this would have been probably the shade that I went for, but this one here, this is my voice. I also have no further questions which looks a little like greeny gold. I think college football starts this weekend. I have no idea when this video is going up because um, my weekend is jam-packed, but we have full college football starting. Then we have Gamma Glow. Hmm. Here's a few of those swatches. I honestly don't know what I want to do. I also forgot to swatch Thunderclap, which is a little bit of like this duochrome here. I don't know, I can't say the swatches are like, nest like even this one, I feel like it looked a lot more in the pan, but it just doesn't have a lot of oomph to it, which, you know, sometimes Urban Decay is not the most known for. They're kind of known for more easy to use, basic, you know, the naked palettes, all of that. So I guess maybe at the same time, I'm not super surprised, but uh, I don't know. And I'll also swatch Hulk out. It's that green in the center. Yeah, and it feels like they just, they don't feel very smooth. They, like, even just swatching it, it feels more, like, the word I was going to say was, like, sticky. <laughs> like, it just feels a little bit more patchy, even just swatching it. Ooh, I don't know. This makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm going to try my best to not get a ton of this shimmer on here. I'm going to use Brains and Brawn with a Sigma E44 first. No, I'm a little bit nervous, but I am going to blend that a little bit higher than my crease. I'm unsure what I'm wearing tonight. We are going to the strips. I'm going to have to dress a little bit nicer but i don't have like a color in mind that could help me with my eyeshadow look and then there's not really like a lighter matte i'm gonna use a case closed and this is from nikia joy cosmetics the eo3 diffused crease and then i'm just gonna take this one to kind of blend that shadow so just kind of taking that back and forth giving it a more blended look and I'm keeping these pretty 
high and then i'm hoping the shimmers i just i don't know i'm hoping the shimmers will steal the show but after swatching them i'm just not sure they will to a mixture of the pink and the purple so we have the uh weho warrior i'm gonna start with that one and use from sigma the cream color i'm just gonna start to run this kind of all over and i'm gonna type it i'm gonna type it going to top it with the lighter pink shade i've just been having so much fun with pinks recently i don't know why this has kind of like been my jam i'm gonna start with the purple because again i feel like this is there's not it's not like a pizzazz shade it looks like it's pizzazz in the pan but it's not really translating a lot to the eyes so i thought maybe if i just did the pink it might not be enough oomph and yeah, I mean, this is my third pass, and I just, again, I see the appeal of Urban Decay, and, like, who I think their main demographic is, and it's probably people who don't love, you know, pressed pigments, um, and just very, like, over-the-top eyeshadows. It's just, for me, I, I just feel like I have better quality in my collection. I feel like I said quality really weird too. And I'm just going to use the same brush and pick up the My Choice in pink. And I'm going to tap this kind of more in the center. Still giving like colorful but everyday type of look. And then a little pop right in the center. Planning to do lashes today. And I really liked, I posted a video five looks with the five throwback palettes and the one i did with dream street i think was my favorite and i felt like the liner i did really like gave the look a new level and so i went to hawaii for a wedding and i did basically that makeup look the whole time but with purple shadows i brought my life's a drive life's a draft palette from ofra with me so i'm gonna try to do it again so i'm gonna take take a stand which is a pretty dark brown and this is actually a morphe e43 brush so just like a flat, this one is like a flat liner brush. And then I'm just going to do a little bit on the outer part of my eye. And then just kind of slightly flick it up here. Again, if I'm using lashes, I typically like to have some sort of liner down too. Just because I feel like it helps hide the band. I'm going to use half lashes. So it's definitely beneficial too, especially on the inner corner to have something there so it's not like such a stark contrast from where the lash stops and where your eye is. I like using a shadow versus like an actual liner because I just feel like I can clean it up so much easier if need be and just like wipe it off a lot more easier. So I'm not the best with uh, liners. So that's definitely the easier route for me. I just used a liner from Urban Decay in my waterline. This is in bourbon and I smudged it a little bit on the lower lash line too. So I'm actually going to take that same liner brush and then at Brains and Brawn, the first shadow that I used, and then I'm just going to smudge those together and just give it a little bit more of a smokier look so after that that is going to do it for the eyes and then i'm going to pop on some false lashes i got the pairs from auric i've already used glasswing the half lash and now today i want to try out clouded once again i'm going to go with the half lash because half lashes are definitely my favorite but this one is the full i really liked the glasswing pair i thought they were very easy to use they were very lightweight so they were very comfortable because i have sensitive eyes so I'm going to pop these on. Okay, putting on lashes reminded me of why I don't do lashes a lot. I'm not exactly sure what had happened, but my left one, I feel like I somehow got lash glue like on the lashes and they became like very sticky and some of them are very like elevated lashes. And I'm like, what? How did, I don't even know how I did that, but I have lash glue all over my leg and lash glue on my shirt. Things escalated. I'm not sure what happened here, but, um, lashes are on and so that is going to complete it for the eye look. Other than that we are just going to go ahead and move over to the lips. So Kaja sent one of their gloss shots. This is a hydrating lip shine and the shade they sent me is in milk tea 
which I thought looked really beautiful. So I'm just gonna add a lip liner and then we will top it off with this. All right, I just did the Humble Lip Liner from Rare Beauty, one of my favorites. And I've never tried any of the casual, uh, no, I was gonna say lip products, but I've tried their like soft matte lipstick, but their glosses I haven't tried. So I'm just gonna add this on top. My first thoughts are it's very smooth, not sticky at all, and it has like a nice, I almost want to say like more of like a hydrating feel to it. Mmm, very shiny, very pretty. So that is the gloss shot from Kaja Beauty, and after that, that will complete this makeup look for today. I feel like it got a little uh, dicey at the end here, but we, but we made it through. We did it, so this is the final look today so for the products that i use for the primer i definitely want to use this more use it with some more of my favorite foundations since i was using a little bit of an old school foundation today but i liked it i feel like it did do a good job with my pores the covergirl concealer with everything i'm not always the best at first impressions because i really i'm one of those people that i really like to try products multiple times before i come up with my thoughts on them but i liked this more than i thought i was going to because even now i still don't feel like my under eyes are too highlighted i don't feel like they look too radiant the applicator kind of threw me off a little bit but but i think that one worked out pretty well i did like the coconut setting powder from siate london and i didn't think it made me look overly dry so i also do appreciate that the merit bronzer like i still even think my forehead looks really nice and bronzed so liking that one, the Jouer Duo, I thought was really beautiful. The Urban Decay palette, I ended up liking the look that I did, but I just don't see it being one of those like standout palettes to me. Not just because of the collaboration, but the quality of the shadows didn't necessarily like blow me away, but they were very easy to use with very more of like the soft muted shadows if that is something that you're into i do like the auric lashes they're very easy to put on unless i manage to get lash glue on the lashes that's on me that's not on the lashes not on the brand but again these were the set and clouded and the half lash but i also really like glasswing and they are even more natural i was wearing them in my last should be what is my last really bite video i thought they were very natural and pretty and then i think the only other thing i had was the lip product which i am liking this one as well so that is everything for today's video trying out all this new makeup that i received in pr i hope you enjoyed seeing a new makeup video some products that maybe you haven't been hearing some buzz about i of course would love to get your feedback in the comments but other than that if you enjoyed this one please make sure to give it a thumbs up i hope you also consider subscribing before you go and i'll see you in my next video